Hey guys, Rich here, and this has been a heck of a trip to try to get organized. My friend Brian was going to come up from Texas for this one, and my friend Glenn was going to come down from Canada. Brian got a broken plane, Glenn is stuck in weather. We'll see if I do any better. If you look in front of us here, you can see some of the buildups that I'm heading into. My last trip was up to North Fox Island, and it was kind of a bust. Didn't get to cook anything because the conditions were no good. It was rainy for four or five days in a row. Was kind of stuck on the island as well. Forecast didn't pan out. Things got a lot more rainy and a lot lower than expected. Tried to fly the drone some. Got rained out on that as well. Didn't find any of the wrecks. It was overcast and I learned that on an overcast day it's really hard to see into the water. You really need to have that point source from the sun and then the blue sky as a darker background to reflect from. Did find the crescent with the drone, but on that side of the island it was really wavy and those waves just made it hard to, to do any quality videography. So that was a bust. So yeah, all in all, I just kind of hung out. I mean, it wasn't all bad. I was walking along the beach uh, after work every day, telecommuting from North Fox Island, and saw a bunch of timbers from the various wrecks and things like that. So that was still kind of fun, but definitely not the trip that I had planned to do. Today, we've got some weather in front of us, and some of it's pretty tall, out to the west in particular. Things are pretty tall and pretty intense. In front of us, I'm just not sure. I'm 80 miles from the radar returns, but it sure does look like it's getting hazy a lot more quickly than that. And this whole thing might just be a bust. So we're getting into it here. We've got about eight or 10 miles of visibility. So we're still in pretty good shape. Still another couple miles until we're really under the weather though. Some parts look like they've improved. Some parts look like they've gotten a little bit worse. Definitely still visual though. So we're gonna keep going and we've got a couple options. Uh, including simply turning around and heading the other direction. But one of the things that you can do in situations like this in the ADSB era is look at what the other planes are doing. So we've got a few different ones that have all gone through this area and they're all seemingly the same kind of airplane as mine. Uh, single engine piston going between, it looks like uh, 70 or 80 knots and 150 knots variety of different altitudes from pretty low to uh, this one's at uh, 8,000 with our uh, probably on an instrument flight plan. And by looking at things like that, you can kind of gauge whether or not people are seeing things that you should be especially worried about. Three small planes like that going into the same weather, turning around means something compared to three small planes going into this weather and continuing on. I'm looking at the radar right now, and I'm looking at what I can see out the window right now. The radar shows, you know, a little bit of uh, rain that way, a little bit of rain that way. And looking out the window, I'm confirming that. Looks like straight ahead, there's a pretty good gap. There's still no turbulence, so there's no meaningful convective activity right here. Uh, we're going toward the left side of this big, less developed section. So right now, I think we're looking pretty good. And again, if we're not looking good, we have options. So right now, we've got an airport right there. So I feel pretty comfortable going another few miles, seeing what's going on. If that rain turns out to be something more than what it looks like from this distance, I've got an option. Just getting to the back end of the weather, and in a little bit of drizzle. I cleaned up with eyes outside before the trip. Wanted to be able to see everything through the windshield. And now I guess I'm getting a second cleaning from Mother Nature. I really do like that eyes outside though. I've been using it for years. It's very effective, very affordable. It doesn't leave a greasy film behind like certain lemon scented solutions do. And I've been using their product one quite a bit as well. I've been especially impressed with how the water beads when you use one, very effective lowers the surface tension so much that I can't even get the bottle of the product itself to stay on the cowl when I use it. But this whole flight has been super smooth until I got here to the back end of this storm. That's gone from super smooth to, to quite choppy. I know on the other side things are smooth again because I've been 
messaging my buddies and getting reports. So I don't really get airsick, but a good trick in situations like this is to keep an eye on the horizon. Doing that helps keep your head a little bit more level and gives your brain something to orient itself to. Pretty surprised it's raining so much still. Looking out the window, it looks like we're past the back end of the storm. I guess it must be carrying quite a bit. I mean, I guess it's not a crazy surprise because there is clearly some wind up here. Things seem to be settling down. I did pull for that one already once, though. We are definitely to the point where going forward is our safety plan rather than going backward. We're also definitely to the point where we're starting to see the first fall colors. Okay, eight minutes out. We've got, uh, we've got one, two, four, echo, echo in front of us, pretty far in front of us, can't see them. But we're talking with them, and they're going to guide the way. Based on the winds in the area, it looks like it's pretty clearly going to be a landing on runway 28. But they're in front of us, so they're going to make that call. Not too many options if you have an engine failure around here. You know, all these little lakes up here, interesting that some of them have several houses and some of them have none. I don't really know what causes one to be more desirable than another, or one to be more buildable than another. I guess is probably the other way to look at it. Okay, we're going to follow four Echo Echo in here. They are now a thousand below us, circling the field. I can see the town of Sydna in front of us here. It's pretty easy to see because there's not much else going on up here. It is just to the south of the strip, and now I can start to see the strip as well. And now I don't really have much choice except to reduce power and start my descent into that probably more choppy air. Sit that traffic, Cessna 124, Echo Echo, flying over the field, get a good look at the field and then enter in left traffic pattern for 28, Sit not traffic. Sit not traffic, one whiskey tango, Cessna's in sight, I'm going to join the pattern behind you and continue my descent into Sit now. Sidna traffic one, Whiskey Tango train, final two eight, Sidna. Sidna traffic four, Echo Echo, clear runway, Sidna. Sidna traffic one, Whiskey Tango short, final two eight, Sidna. Sydney, Michigan is a serene community that annually attracts aviation enthusiasts for the Pilots of America fly-in. Nestled amidst the Upper Peninsula's natural beauty, attendees camp under starry skies, relishing local fare at neighborhood bars. The town's historic schoolhouse becomes a hub of camaraderie. All that needs to be put in, out, out of context someplace. Where pilots gather, sipping beverages, and exchanging tales of airborne adventures. Sydney, with its rustic charm, provides the perfect backdrop for such cherished memories. Whether you know them from Sonora, Mexico, where they were invented, or LA, where they became insanely popular as street dogs, Mexican hot dogs are a tasty option while camping. We're going to top the dogs with hot and cold salsa. First, we're dicing tomatoes and reminding myself why I stopped using this shaky table to film videos. Next, we're doing the same with an onion, Next, we're dicing this perfectly ripe avocado, hitting the 20 minutes between when it's too hard to use and starting to rot. Then we throw a lime into the bowl, reconsider for a second, and decide instead to squeeze it into the salsa. Okay, that's the cold salsa. For the hot salsa, we start by thinly slicing a red pepper. Take another hack at the onion we put into the cold salsa. This will give us a nice blend of bite and crunch from the cold and sweet caramelized notes from the hot. Then I added two jalapenos fresh from my garden. I mostly scrape the ribs out, leave those in if you want it more spicy. All that goes into a hot pan with a bit of veggie oil to roast and bring out the flavors. When vegetables are roasted at a high temperature, the natural sugars in them begin to caramelize. Caramelization creates complex flavors and sweet tastes that can make vegetables more palatable. The Maillard reaction is a reaction between amino acids and sugars in the vegetables when exposed to heat. It results in browning and produces a deep, rich, 
flavor profile that isn't present in raw or some other cooking methods. Roasting also helps evaporate some of the water contained within the vegetables. This concentration effect can intensify the inherent flavors of the vegetables. The softening of the veggies will provide a nice contrast with the crisp onions and peppers in the cold salsa. Many have said that the biggest liability in hot dogs is that they're too healthy, specifically that they lack enough fat and salt. These Mexican dogs solve that problem by wrapping them in bacon. It also solves the problem with the hot dogs themselves having to face the world naked and alone. Doing this in a pan is not a perfect solution. Many recipes suggest cooking them in an oven, but it's hard to bring an oven camping, so we're gonna fry them. And I put an extra piece of bacon in as a reward for putting the meal together. Once everything's in the pan, it's just a matter of keeping things moving, keeping the bacon cooking, moving the toothpicks, rolling things around, and letting things get cooked thoroughly. I don't know about you, but I've always thought that bacon was one of the best smells on the planet. And having that smell out here next to an airplane on a camping trip is really something that everybody should get a chance to experience. Once everything is cooked, they come out of the pan and onto a fresh bun. Then I carefully put myself in the sunlight to make the image less appealing and first put the grilled salsa on to keep the warm ingredients together. Then we add the cold salsa and give everything a taste. This one is definitely in the clean plate or hands club. The avocado especially, adding a creamy texture that is usually missing from a hot dog. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this, my channel has about 100 other flying, camping, and cooking videos. Be sure to check out the catalog, and if you subscribe, you'll get alerted for the next one. See you soon.